nutrition. Nutrition is arguably one of the most important aspects of a 100 miler and of drop bag planning. And by arguably, I mean you could argue with me, but you'd be wrong. You may remember these quotes from our podcast with Jessica Vandenbush. Lee said, if you haven't put in calories in the, in the last 30 minutes, your race has started to go south. And you won't even know it until it's too late, said Jess. You'll be like the frog in the pot of boiling water. I think that's one of the most important things to come out of either of our podcasts yet, the most important tips of advice. You should really be getting those calories in about every 30 minutes. You're looking at no less than 300 calories per hour for the entirety of your race to not get behind. So 300 calories per hour, though, how do you know how to plan your drop bags for that? Well, if you watched my other videos, you may recall this handy-dandy little pace chart that we made. That's part of what this is for right here. So I had calculated that going as fast as I want to go to be able to pace properly for actually 135 miles, I made my little fake one to simplify things here, but we determined that I'll get to that first drop bag right here five hours in at the earliest, right? Now, if I'm more on track for my 46 hours, which is the latest I want to be pacing for, then I'm looking at about seven hours. Okay, so if I'm looking at 300 calories per hour, I'm looking at 1,500 to about 2,100 calories that I want to carry with me to start. Okay, so I made another little chart here because I'm all about the spreadsheets. Try to zoom in more because last time things seemed kind of blurry. All right, so I made another little spreadsheet here. And you could see I've got one for the start too because that's important to plan what you're going to be starting with. Um, if we back up a second here, one of the things we need to consider when talking about nutrition is how much of the aid station nutrition are you going to be using? Are you going to be relying heavily on those aid stations? Uh, there are some things to think about if you're going to be doing that. If it is a first-year race, be skeptical. If it is a smaller race, be skeptical. If it's a well-known race, those often are pretty well-stocked aid stations, but sometimes not. So try to get a little bit of information. Don't assume that your aid station is going to be well-stocked. I have been to many a race where it was slim pickings at the aid stations. Now, some of the bigger races do put out a pretty comprehensive chart of... Uh, how fully stocked those aid stations will be, and if you could ex expect total meals, like some of the bigger races have. Some of them have where you could flat out order something off of like a little menu, or uh, some of them have like bacon and things like that, but sometimes you're just looking at like tiny little cups of like a piece of banana in it or something like that, and not a whole lot going on. Um, I... I'm typically self-supported. I am a picky vegan eater. Now, occasionally I will run off with a stack of the Aid Station's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but I do plan to be completely self-supported as far as my nutrition goes, and if I end up stealing a couple of snacks, I do. I mean, it's not stealing. I paid for them. I paid good money for it, but I do go ahead and make my drop bag plan as if I'm going to be supplying 100% of my calories to myself here. So I got this five to seven hours from start. Uh, this is where everything I'm going to have with me on the start, okay? And five to seven hours should be about the time it takes to get to that first drop bag. Um, I'm going to have breakfast, so I went ahead and deducted about 300 calories off of here because I will have eaten right at the start line. And I just typed in a couple of things. I mean, how you figure out what to make up your calories for. I've given you the tools to figure out how many calories you need. It is up to you completely to decide what should comprise those calories. But uh, for me, I went ahead and scratched a few things in here. I like bobo bars at the start of a race. I have trouble eating them later in the race. A Huma gel, a caffeinated, that's supposed to say calf, a, a caffeinated spring gel, a decaf spring gel, and two of my homemade pouches, okay? And that gives me about 1,800 calories when the longest it should take me uh, would have been seven hours to get to that first drop bag. So 2,100 calories if we were looking at the worst case scenario. But like I said, I'm going to have a, a few hundred calorie 
breakfast, so I don't need as many there as well. Plus, I'll probably be closer to that five hours than that seven hours, but you maybe don't know for you where you're going to come in at. Uh, I do want to go back to our caffeinated spring gel here, and also, just a heads up, this Huma also has a little bit of caffeine in there. Lee and I are both heavy coffee drinkers. We drink way too much coffee. We drink coffee all day. We like our coffee. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging you for your coffee intake, but I will tell you that if you have caffeine all day, every day, you're one of those people, you're a caffeine addict like us, you need to consider that for your race planning. You need to, either way, you need to consider your caffeine intake on a regular basis into your race planning because if you're somebody who does not have caffeine on a regular basis and you're popping all these gels, not realizing that they're caffeinated gels, oh man, you're going to be off the wires. You're going to have heart palpitations. You're not going to be feeling good, actually. Like you might get a, a burst to begin with, but then it's going to be too much. You might feel lightheaded, dizzy, all sorts of things. That's not good. You don't want to over caffeinate. Now, if you're like me, where you're a total caffeine addict, and it takes a whole lot of caffeine to even impact you like that, um, what I've discovered is that I do best in a race if I have like a steady trickle of caffeine. It's not good to over-caffeinate. I did that uh, one time where I kind of scared the crap out of myself by, by over-caffeinating and having the heart palpitations and stuff. I mean, it took a whole lot of caffeine to do that. Don't do what I did. We won't even, we won't even discuss, but... Uh, for this, these gels have, I think, about like 100 milligrams of caffeine each. And just having that kind of steady trickle throughout the day, like every couple of hours, getting like 50 to 100 milligrams of caffeine, something along those lines. Um, that is how I operate best, since I'm somebody who has a very large caffeine intake in my regular life. But you, if you don't, need to be careful about not having too much caffeine during the race, plus you want to kind of reserve the extra caffeine intake for the nighttime, the witching hours, as I call them. All right, so using the method I just showed you, I went ahead and calculated all my calories and the things that I wanted to use for those, and I have set them on top of the bag here. Now, there are two things that I wanted to show you. One on the note of caffeine, which I'm grouping in with nutrition, I know it's not quite the same thing, but to me, it might as well be. Um, I've got in each of my drop bags here, one of these, a Cliff double espresso shot. And that's 100 milligrams of caffeine. Whenever you hear us talk about crack gels, that's what we're talking about. These are 100 calories, but I actually don't even factor it into my planned nutrition because these are emergency only. This is for when I just really need that pick-me-up. I don't just use it to fuel. That's like, I'm tired and I really need it. I don't want to be having any more of these than one every 20 miles, if even. And then this, Starbucks via instance here, this is like super emergency. And I do have one in each bag just in case I like to have one in my vest. This is for, especially if I'm like falling asleep at night during those witching hours, I will actually just dump this in my mouth and chase it with water if I have to. Uh, some aid stations don't have coffee, but most of them have hot water, so you could always also mix it with that. Uh, sometimes in like the last 15 miles of a race, I should be ashamed to tell you, but I'm not. Sometimes I will dump it in Coca-Cola along with some salt at an aid station at the very end of a race to see me through the last miles. So I do have one of each of these in each one of my drop bags as an emergency. And then the second thing that I wanted to show you here are my IOUs, is what I call them. I have an IOU paper for uh, each one of my drop bags here. And this is for things that um, I cannot put in my drop bag right now for whatever reason. If uh, I'll probably be adding to it as I go, but it might be like I have a layer that I want to wear and it's in the laundry right now. Uh, with my homemade pouches, those of course are in the freezer and I they need to be kept cold, so I can't put them in my drop bags. So each drop bag, I have my IOU paper so that I know what still has to be put in there. And so as I approach race day or the day before we leave, I can be like, oh, hey, I got to grab this. Um, this isn't my first rodeo, guys. Checklists galore. Like, you want to have all sorts of safeguards for not forgetting any of these things. The drop bag IOU is one of mine.